Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I am your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos, and this is a show where we talk about the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. I know, my bad last week, super, super busy, I'm super tired right now, I end up getting up at like 6 in the morning to, to record the quarry, it's 8 in the morning now, and I'm just tired, so, and it's Saturday, so, yay, so, yeah. Uh, happy Avengers movie day to you all. Um, you're going to go see Avengers. Yeah, so I'm probably going to go see it this afternoon, maybe. But I need to get some sleep. All right. Um, today's show is is going to be a harken back way, way back, like almost three years in which... I sort of go in and it's like, this is how you kill Sentry and Void. Um, after Kenny Pena's win at Canadian Nationals, it's just a little bit BS about the gluttony dupe team. So what we're going to do is, in today's episode, we're going to go over that team in particular. Because I know previously... We're like, here's the meta, and here's these parts, and here's all the things that you not need to realize, and break it down, and blah, 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 and the pudding pops, and the aww, and all that stuff. But um, we're just specifically going to look at this team, um, because people have tried to make teams to beat it, and failed. So, <clears throat> also, if you don't know, retirement's going to happen in July so Kenny's team is going to be completely legal through Gen Con, 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 Con. So yeah, all right. So let's let's get this crack a lacking, and and we're gonna break everything. I'm gonna break everything down, and then we're we're going to go piece by piece uh, to what everything's going to do and what you need to bring, or, or, or what elements uh, you can counter of of this. Okay, all right. So first off, we have Gluttony. Now, Gluttony is is really not that great um in the sense of his numbers and his ability to sort of get around if if you just looked at his stats it minus his powers or anything just look at his stats it's like really horrible when's the last time w would you pay for five movement uh 10 attack and two damage and 16 defense on a starting click and you would say if that character was 25 points i would and that's that's my point. Um, he starts off with poison, which is useful um, because his damage output is so low. His peak damage output is on click three. I mean, on click two. Okay. Uh, so just, you know, keep that in mind. Now you have entity on gluttony, which needless to say, entity is just about going to boost all your stats except for your attack. Okay. And uh, that uh, that's sort of interesting. Uh, and definitely when you're looking on click one with me grabbing my own entity, you know, you're not you're not upping your attack anywhere like. Yeah, because entity is not the one that you pick if you want to up your attack above 10. So there you go. Boom. Automatically, we know we're not getting plus one attack from. Um, from the entity what you are getting is plus one damage and that's about it so i can do a whopping three damage okay next up is that he has sidestep um and sidestep is quite useful because his movement is so low really low so without any modifiers or weird stuff he can move seven squares in a turn that's it. You can move seven squares. Um, and that's not bad. It's, it's not bad at all. Uh, but you have to realize you're parsing it out between a five movement and then a sidestep. Okay. So figures like Turtle can slow him down, not by much, but figures like Turtle can affect him. So, I mean, with the, with the low movement, Turtle... Turtle really doesn't affect him like hugely, but it still sort of jacks with him because it's like, oh, I hardly can get over there and I will take a token if I move more than three. So you can sort of hard lock him to a five with a turtle. So 
that that is a thought. It is a thought. Mind you, it's not a full on counter, but it's a thought. Um, but overall, you can start to see why Kenny has said like, hey, look, hammers, blah, check this out, you know, charge, your running shot, minimum range value four, because he really isn't that that robust in the sense of his stats. So you have to augment the stats. Um, the defense numbers are really low just because like, hey he doesn't care about being hit same thing like old school impervious when the average damage was two. Oh, you hit me you got lucky and got three damage <laughs> i'll take one or if i take any at all i guess i don't take any damage i rolled a six anyway uh you have uh the ability to decide the gluttony relic to dupe but you don't really have to uh, then you have the um, feed from your gluttony trait. Gluttony can use steel energy. Opposing characters within five squares can't be healed. Now, here's here's the thing. It forces you to do melee stuff with gluttony because, of course, he has melee range. Um, uh, but at the other end, you're not limited to that with the hammers. Now, you can take away steel energy and just make sure that whatever he eats, he eats uh, in damage-wise. But that's something that is a little bit more tougher to do. And you're also dedicating a lot of effort just to make sure that gluttony doesn't heal back up. Then you have, uh, of course, the mountains of flab gluttony can't be carried. So he's doing the carrying with dupe when gluttony is dealt damage. Uh, gluttony ignores all but one damage. This power can't be countered or ignored. So here's, here's where this other element comes in. You have quintessence here, okay? That stops you from being outwitted. Then you have this power that says you can't have your powers countered or ignored. That's a problem. That's just a huge problem right there. So, so what you have is you have greed, another sin, with the Omega Drive. And then you give him outwit somehow, like Power Plant or whatever. Um or ion or some 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 way getting him outwit boom you're able to outwit this just because of what is been ruled with the omega drive and all that okay otherwise even if you're able to take away quintessence you can't you can't outwit this so you need to have that or you need to have something like agent 13 it's like nope you can't use defensive abilities jenny sparks is popular because you just don't get to use special powers and um you uh, Malekith, you don't get to use defensive powers, stuff like that. OK, so that's why people are picking those characters to deal with it. My philosophy is this. If we read it in, in, in particular, it says when gluttony is dealt damage, gluttony ignores all but one damage. OK, what does this not deal with? Like if I have mystics and I have my mystic says you take two unavoidable damage, it's unavoidable. Uh, if you use the impact beam and you get knocked into against the wall, you take two unavoidable damage, get knocked off a building. You'll take three unavoidable damage. So yeah, uh, there are some problems, um, with this defense power here. And there's things that you can do that are useful that are also useful against other characters. Okay. This is the main thing because some people are like, well, I got to build to beat this team or this team. And it's like, no, you just need elements that solve for general categories that come up. And the more general categories that you come up, the more answers that you'll have to more types of teams. If you were just trying to build like, I'm going to build, beat Kenny's team with the gloop, dutney, chutney, blah, blah, new team. No, don't, don't, don't go like that. That's bad. That's really bad. Okay. So I'm, I'm just pointing to you out like some things that are issues. All right. So we're going to go to the aura of rotten decay. Now, this is your main problem is this aura of rotten decay, because first off, it says gluttony can use exploit weakness, um, but he's getting it on click two, which inevitably he's going to get there. Uh, when gluttony hits an opposing character, remove any relic and resource attachments assigned to it from the game relics and resources attached can't be assigned to that character this game now 
here's here's some fun stuff right there. You you can make it so that that character's attachments are gone. Um, it takes care of resource attachments. It does not take care of constructs that are on the character in hand inherently. Okay, uh, and so a lot of people don't understand that. So you can still use your construct stuff. Um, because it says specifically when gluttony hits an opposing character, remove any relic and resource attachment uh, to it from the game. Now, again, if you start the game with Guy Gardner and Guy Gardner starts with a boxing glove, he can't take away your boxing glove. The only thing that he can do is take away if you're running, you know, a Green Lantern power battery and you want to assign Guy Gardner the wall. Yeah, you just can't be assigned the wall and the wall goes away from the game. He doesn't score it because it just says remove. Okay, so that's another element. He doesn't score that. So that's that's one thing you got to look at against these these players is it doesn't say you in the past. It says specifically that you score these things. This one says you it doesn't say you score those points. Okay. All right. Now, let's let's keep going. The the next problem that we were starting to see here is uh, sorry. The next thing that we're, we're starting to do when we break it down in here is like I said before, you yeah, ask quintessence. So you just can't come in and you're like, whoop, I outwit things. Uh, but you can take away his quintessence team ability through a couple of ways. Uh, or at least, you know, give him some problems. The first off is Sinestro. Like Sinestro, I, I thought he was going to be huger than what he was right now um pretty much is uh death to the guardians uh sinestro can use pulse wave opposing characters that can use quintessa's team ability instead can't use it and modify their combat values by minus one so if we go back to gluttony who has quintessence and we take his crappy values and we say minus one guess what i have a four movement nine attack 15 defense and one damage on click one that sucks. That sucks big time. So you're 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 automatically at a bigger disadvantage with gluttony, um, and you don't get entity bumps because the entity bumps only affects your printed values. It's printed values, not oh I got minus two because of the Sinestro core battery. Now the entity can give me plus one attack. Doesn't work like that. Okay, so. Um, having quintessence right there can can set you up. You can use Catwoman from the same set and just like bloop, you don't have Mystics or uh, quintessence. You also have access to uh, AVX Scarlet Witch, which everyone sort of forgot about, but will probably come to remember here real soon with all the Avengers stuff. And just say no more quintessence, no more Mystics, and uh, that that could hurt you, uh, hurt the Gluttony player as well. All right, um, I think Thanos is the only character that just says you can't heal. I think I, I think that's it. There's not too many... No, 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 no. Uh, Sabretooth on... The Sabretooth asset on the zombie team base says you can't heal. So, guess what? You're stuck. All right, now let's, let's sort of break some things down. What's what's your worst option if you're dealing with gluttony beyond being a glorified taxi um, and gluttony is actually going in there and attacking and doing damage? What's the worst things that you can have? Well, uh, the worst thing is going up against gluttony, unfortunately, uh, involves uh, just having a power plant in general uh, because you can't get your ring reassigned to you through the construct so you can't get the benefits of the battery if you're definitely relying on that battery to get over so that becomes a huge 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 deal uh more than uh, a lot of people might care to admit another thing that becomes a huge 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 deal is the fact that um, once you you start trying to use like weird and odd effects to to get over them you know yeah, you, you're going to have to sink a lot, sometimes a lot of points in there just to sort of contain it, which which is a different, this, this is a whole different problem. But going back to the resource element, you, you can't really fight uh, 
gluttony with a character that constantly is requ- requiring a, a heal mechanic. So like flurry super scroll does not work. It just doesn't. Um, and super scroll is probably one of the main reasons why gluttony became real popular because he can just stand up against super scroll and super scroll at max in a turn can do max four damage to gluttony. And that's me saying flurry plus knockback damage and, and, and that happening twice without him having the charge hammer. That's it. So there, there are some issues there. All right. Now, um, let's take this a step further and um, we're going to go to the next stage. So now we're going to go and look at dupe. Now dupe for a lot of people, if they don't know, dupe came out last year. Uh, I didn't get a dupe. I wanted a dupe, uh, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't win one. And then he was like gone. And I had to make a choice between World's Finest or Dupe. And I knew I was going to play World's Finest. So, oh, well, you know, you can't have it all. Uh, so let's let's look at Dupe. And then we're going to start seeing some crucial elements here. Um, dupe is 95 points. He has a six range over Gluttony's zero range. So there's some importance there. Then he has Running Shot uh, Precision Strike on first click with 10 attack and 10 movement. 18 defense is bare and 2 damage. So it's not a lot of damage. So it's like, well, okay. So if we look back at Kenny's team, he has Proselyte on dupe. Now, grab my Proselyte. Proselyte can boost all except for defense uh and then movement defense and movement and range of of kenny stat of dupe stats so and you have access to um plasticity super strength toughness which you never need and uh perplex so you you have access to all of those so you could uh on click one you know just perplex up you know your damage uh pick up uh, heavy or sorry uh, sorry not pick up a heavy you could just you know get the charge hammer pick up a heavy and now you're doing five so that can uh, not heavy uh yeah not five four you're doing four damage there we go so let's let's keep things straight so y- you're looking you have to look at dupe and realizing that yeah gloop is a glorified i'm not gloop um gluttony is a glorified taxi and dupe is the damage Gloop is the total damage output for the entire team. And a lot of people don't realize that. Okay. Uh, next element when we start really trying to break it down is that the dupe has two traits that are huge. And the main reason that they're huge is that uh, the main ways of dealing with him are sort of locked out. Uh, first is I destroy reputations and topple nations once per game, give dupe a double power action to remove a resource or relic assigned to an opposing character within six squares and assign it to another opposing character within six squares. Uh, this is a double power action, but still it's like all of a sudden you don't have angrier's hammer on who you needed to be on. Then you have dupe land dupe. Dupe's combat values can't be modified by other characters. This is a key. Characters. Okay. Um, When Dupe is dealt damage from an attack, he ignores all of it and takes one unavoidable damage instead. This ability can't be ignored. Now, let's let's sort of break some of this down and let's let's look at i destroy reputations and topple nations and then go into dupe land i destroy reputations and topple nations is a once per game effect so we can't just keep doing this okay so that's key um the next thing that that kicks in um with this ability is understanding that it does not affect constructs because constructs are not relics Okay, it it messes with all the other resources, but it doesn't mess with batteries. So that's a good thing. Another thing that's that's quite interesting is that they have to be within six squares. It doesn't have to be within line of fire, just six squares. So he could be behind walls and do it. So you have to really 
watch your effect because what dupe is saying is that if i can if i can functionally target you or functionally be within my range of effect i can jack with you and that's that's how it goes um the the second trait is dupe land uh also hold up just a moment he might he might have problems with rocky eternity um, even if you are having multiple characters on the Rock of Eternity, I don't think he could take an element off the Rock of Eternity, one of those relics, and then assign it to somebody else. Don't quote me 100% on that, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, next up is uh, Dupe Land. Dupe's combat values can't be modified by other characters. Uh, when dupe is dealt damage from an attack, he ignores all of it and takes one unavoidable damage instead. Uh, this ability can't be ignored. Now, problem number one, he, he can't have his stats modified by other characters. So he can modify his own stats. Okay. But this also means friendly characters can't perplex up his stats just period okay then uh you have uh the other element uh which is you can't use uh cool stuff like pd or hydra to lower down his defense or perplex down his defense but i am leaving this open but if you have a game effect that's independent of a character um, that can lower defense values or attack values or stuff like that, then that would get around dupe. Also, if your power battery perplexes down dupe's attack or damage or whatever, that would also get around the stat modification because the power battery is not a character. See what I did there? See what I did there? So as long as you're doing something that's not a character, then you're fine. Uh, also, um, I don't know if Pog people count as characters. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know if they count as horde tokens, or if there's something different than a character. So uh, that might be another way out. But I'm, I'm just sort of throwing that one against the wall and seeing if it sticks. And if it doesn't, that's fine. I got to sweep up some spaghetti when it's done. So. All right. Uh, next up. Uh, when we we look at this is that he only ignores damage from one damage uh, ignores all damage but one uh, from an attack now what this means is that if you have Despotellus and uh, this was an issue at US Nationals where uh, Despotellus based Kenny Kenny said I take one damage Kenny was wrong he, he would take two damage if he had two tokens there, uh, poison is not an attack. If you have any effect that's not an attack, it's just like deal and my opponent equal to my damage, like Hellfire Chain or something like that. It's not an attack, so you would take full damage. Period. Uh, so let's let's sort of go in there. Let's let's go look at Hellfire Chain, our good friend Ghost Rider, um, because that. That is a huge deal. Huge. Here we go, Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Hellfire. Uh, living Hellfire Chain. If Ghost Rider has two action tokens, you may give him a free action and deal one penetrating damage to a single opposing character within three squares. So let's say if Hellfire Chain gave us two damage, it would get over on dupe. Okay. So all you have to do is if you can find another character that does something that's not technically an attack and it just deals damage, then yeah, um, you get over on dupe. Another thing with dupe is that um, you, and a lot of people forget this, you can just outwit his flight and knock him off a building and he'll take three damage, uh, two damage. Just pure and simple. Like folks forget just because you're power cosmic doesn't mean that outfit outwit doesn't affect you at all. I could still take away, uh, you know, your sharpshooter 
uh, I can't take away your giant size or tiny size, but I, I could take away your transporter. I could take away your sharpshooter. I can, you know, I, I mean, I could, if you say like, oh, I can't be affected by outwit or targeted by outwit or it's, I'm not targeted by outwit. Um, it, you can't have your powers countered. I can still mess with your abilities. So it's just like, oh, uh, you were grounded. You're stuck. And I just surround you with barrier. And you can't be carried by gluttony. And you can't fly out. And I just do this every turn. And if I can lock up gluttony, oh, well, that's, that's you know, that's a bonus. I just keep hitting gluttony with end cap. So you, you can start to see there's some problems that start to arise on dupe. Because... If if I am able to get around the fact that I can do damage to him and it's not an attack, guess what? He's going to take full damage. Um, so let's take, for example, I have the bulldozer. I put the bulldozer on Jenny Sparks. And Jenny Sparks uh, hits Gluttony. Um, let's say I have Energy Explosion at this time. It hits Gluttony for three I hit dupes right next next to him. Boom. He's going to get hit with energy explosion and get knocked back one. And if there's a wall there, he's going to take damage. So he would take two damage. So if, if I hit and all that, mind you. But you, you start to see where this is going. Um, so there there's, there's some issues here. Now, the other thing is with... Uh, with dupe that some people will overlook is that he has the X-Men team ability. If you have anything that negatively affects the X-Men team ability, just go for it. Just, just, just straight go for it. Um, because what's more annoying is dupe with resurrection man and resurrection man can wild card and he'll dupe. I, I had my friend do that to me the other day. So that, that did suck. So let's let's sort of come back around and, and we'll look at the last two clicks of dupe. Dupe gets perplex and a naked dial, but but perplex on click three and then on click four, um, he has precision strike and perplex at one damage, and then he's dead on click five and forward. So he's not that deep. What that means is if you're able to get like two duo attacks off on him, he's dead. <laughs> And it's like a case for duos by Dark Logos, uh, and you have you have murdered Dupe. Um, at the same time, uh, you will do almost kill Gluttony, which is sad if you're able to do four attacks in one turn and they all land. So, why is why why am I bringing this up? Why am I like looking at it like this? There, there, the major problem in fighting Dupe is even when you add in um, proselyte because dupe gets proselyte and yes I know split lips in the back giving free quake bombs and all the other stuff the the main problem that you're you're dealing with is that once he gets on click two his his versatility becomes really really high because of proselyte and proselytes pick a power and so that can get really strong. Now, here's the weakness of Proselyte's pick a power. Proselyte's pick a power is a free action. So, if he goes against a Green Lantern power battery, all you have to do is say, like, hey, guy, um, you can use pick a power, but you won't be able to charge a running shot. Or even White Witch. You just be like, well, you pick the power and you call running shot and that's an illegal action. So you just stay there. Well, I'm going to do that. No, you just stay there. And this is the thing where I will start to say to people, if you play Kenny or anybody playing this team and, and they do something wrong, you just call them on it. And like, well, you stop there. Oh, you don't go because it, to an extent you're, 
you should know if you're Kenny, you should know your team inside and out by now. You won two national tournaments, and if you're anybody else, you're net decking, so you should have had plenty of time to practice. Just just being real with it right now, okay. Uh, some some added thoughts. Uh, just looking at at the the team in general. Um, when you go in and and just sort of looking at what proselyte. <laughs> Proselyte provides a lot of flexibility, but also um, just stat wise, you get some benefits from Proselyte. If I can get him back up, you can you can bump your attack. You can bump uh, your damage just about the entire time. Well, the entire time and, and I think you can up your movement, too, so. And it, you you have super strength option just cleanly there for three of the clicks. So you're you're in a very very good position overall, a very good position um, overall. Now, if we if we step back and you say like, all right, um, split lip give me free you know hammer drops, and we're just putting everything together. Um, we got a, uh, just about a full book of the skull so I can get empowered by the serpent and get plus one movements and damage and defense and all this other stuff. How do I take all that stuff on? And the truth of the matter is it gets real rough. Um, but if you outsiders gluttony, gluttony becomes very screwed. If you white witch power action, this team has a horrible time. A horrible horrible time in the meta because then you're you're looking at this situation uh gluttony has to come in and, and land a major attack dealing with a 10 attack and do two damage and then you have uh dupe with a 10 attack and two damage uh, the new coriander causes so many problems for dupe. It's not even funny because he can't get all those modifications, including from the object. Once outsider outsiders is put on him. It's just, Oh, okay. I'm going to try to shoot coriander and no, it's, it doesn't work. Coriander has enough range and enough movement to dance around gloop. I mean the, yeah, the gloop combo. So you're, you have a problem. You, you, you have a straight problem. Now I know you could say like, well, but entity on gluttony and gluttony can heal dupe up only. You only can use that healing only if it's the beginning of the turn. So let's go to entity real quick and sort of see why entity is on there instead of something more offensive. And you will see entity flow of life at the beginning of your turn you may heal one adjacent character without the black lantern core keyword boom it's an adjacent so if something happens and it's like boop we're going to i'm going to go pick up a hammer and then i'm going to go and move and now i'm going to heal with entity with flow of life i'm sorry homie you can't it happens at the beginning of the turn so even with split lip if you're like i'm going to pick up a hammer and then I'm going to pick powers and all the stuff. You could do that because it's a free action quake. It's still beginning of the turn. But the moment that you move or do any power actions or anything like that, then it's not the beginning of the turn anymore. Okay. So there's there's some issues with that. And the other element that you just have to remember as well is that if he free action quakes, he made an attack. And if he tries an attack, his damage is lowered by one. It's just how it is. Even if he doesn't hit anything, your second attack is going to have his damage lowered. You, you free action quaked. You picked up the hammer. Quake is an option. Even if they don't roll for it or not, they still quaked. That's that's the other thing that folks they they try to get over on you. So, I mean, and I, I'll say this: Have I been tough on Kenny? Yeah, mainly because I've gotten a lot of interesting reports, and then after watching. 
the finals game with some misplays. I can understand high level stress. You're tired. I've been there. Look at look up Edward Shelton on YouTube on my Tulsa Rocks, and you will see me lose games. Okay. Period. Two. Two in particular, you will see me lose games. So I, I am fully empathetic about being on camera. I'm and you if you watch my games, you will probably say, Hey Edward, there's these moments there that you probably did something illegal. Fully fair. Okay. Fully fair. Um but at the same time, you won't see me playing the same team twice and then doing the same mistakes. So the and then that's the thing is if you see anybody else play this, it's not because oh I I was sitting in my lab one day away from the internet and society and I was my I had the complete collection of hero clicks and I decided to build this. No fool, you did not. You net decked. So if you deal with somebody in their net deck and just be like yo, this is the rules. What's up, homie? What's up? Okay. And and you got to stay on top of that. You just really do. Um, the biggest opening in this entire team is split lip. If you have high mobility, you just go kill split lip and dance around gluttony and dupe. Um, but the main thing is that you have to limit, you have to be able to limit their mobility while not being able to limit yours. And that's one of the huge things like dupe can fly, but gluttony can't, and he has no improved movement. So if you throw a smoke cloud underneath his butt, he's sort of in trouble. Um, and that's one case for the net um, being sort of mandatory because you you have not only are you hindering gluttony, he has to also roll breakaway so that that in and of itself just sucks. He can't just ooze through the net and reform himself. So um, there there's some things there um, that I really think that's real valuable, real useful Um and and counters to like the core elements of this team but overall i think a lot of people are just getting frustrated um and and they don't see any answers to to deal with it so oh man all right so you can see with a, a bit of a bit of creativity you can Start start doing some some really really strong things. Another another element that I'm I'm going to sort of throw up uh, here for you, um, more along the lines of them being um, weirder tactics that most people aren't going to be looking at. Uh, that would still be valid. Uh, the the first, and a lot of people are going to be like. Oh, really? That? I didn't think about that. Um, cop cars. Um, two turns, of, two cop cars in two turns. You you can't get, uh, you, you really can't get a gluttony back over to, um, back over to uh, dupe. And you just, you know, car one runs over gluttony, car two runs over, I mean, sorry, car one runs over dupe, car two runs over dupe. And you're, and you're like, okay, all right, so how do I parse these, these points out, Dark Logos? And I'm like, nah, I don't know. Um, and this one's sort of a little bit more off the top of the dome than anything else. Uh, then you have a wizard. And wizard can circle around, uh, not wizard, speed demon. Speed demon can circle around dupe and just one shot him uh, if he rolls it right. So that's another like natural enemy that's there. The issue is, is that you have to deal with your other matchups. And then how are you going to mitigate your other matchups? But other than that, you're you're starting to see that you can get creative. You can start doing uh, veritable things. Uh, to start messing with this sort of crappy meta that we we have. Um, I also like, uh, I think I said it last time we talked, I like Etrigan. Um, and, and Etrigan does something that most other figures don't do, is that he's just able to reset. And if he's able to reset at the right time, uh, he could just keep going and going and going. 
Uh, he can be killed, but his ability to reset uh, is is really strong. But he his t- running a team with him requires that you're able to get rid of Pulse Wave. Like you have to be able to get rid of Pulse Wave. If you can't get rid of Pulse Wave, then it it won't work. So. Anyway, there there are ideas out there. There's a tons of stuff that's floating around um, in the metasphere. Uh, the the book of the skulls definitely bringing some crazy offense back into the game. Uh, but we we're going to start having to ask ourselves some some solid questions. Uh, question number one: Am am I going to run this team or something like it? Uh, and and that's really a big question. But the main thing you have to understand is if you're going to run uh, Gloop, if you're going to, I keep calling it Gloop because of that stream. If you're going to keep, if you're going to run Dupe and you're going to run Gluttony, uh, you're going to need to find some way to augment their attack because a 10 attack isn't that great. Um, it's, and so book and battery off the top are the number one and two options because you have to augment both of their attacks. So you can't do something like run the utility belt. Uh, the next thing is you need to figure out how are you going to allow them to keep healing up and regening. And uh, last of all, uh, you're going to have to take some, some time uh, to figure out what maps work best for you. And then even if you're not playing them, uh, you need to figure out what maps work best for them. Now, if you're if you're on the other side, the other side of the of the mountain, and you're just say forget this, um, you're you're going to have to look at a couple of things. First off, can you offer a diversity of of options in in dealing with the each and every part of of this team? Uh, if if you know, I've listed off like. 12 different things to break down this team. Uh, So if you're able to, you know, put in two or three, you're good. And, and you're able to engage. And that would also allow you to use two or three of those same mechanics uh, against another team. Then you have, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, You, you have some other elements that come up because like for me, sometimes my creativity would um, force me to just like look at things and just say like, oh, of course, this is going to be awesome. When in actuality, it really wasn't as awesome as I thought it would uh, would be. Um, but you're 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 going to have to say like, all right, where is the meta at? What elements are most common in the meta and start to start breaking things down by categories and make sure and make sure that you're able to handle that gloop. Uh, gloop team i keep going back to it uh man it's that that tiredness uh kicking in (laughs) anyway there is a third option and um i had a a mild conversation with uh jittery about that um the third option to the meta is just to run just to run and not engage um now, some people might say, well, that's not fun. And I'm like, well, yeah, it sort of isn't fun. But you, if you can just run and do it well, uh, your, your opponent really is going to have a hard time engaging you. And if your opponent, if, if the gluttony dupe team can't engage you and the anti-gluttony dupe can't, team can't engage you, you just force roll-offs. So it's it's a different type of thinking um, that can be a high mobility team that can be a super, super duper uh, wall off team, whatever it is. You might say, well, well gluttony and the, the hammers and they bust through the walls and all the other stuff I'm like, uh, you know, figure it out. Just just figure it out. So um, I'm going to wrap up today's show uh, with the little story that happened to me the other day. And uh, it's it's an interesting sort of tale about the the meta. So many longtime listeners are aware of my uh, my friend Mega Lotus Man, and Mega Lotus Man has pretty much, for the most part, stopped playing Hero Clicks. And one of the main things that 
grab me about him stop pl- grab me when when he stopped playing is that one of my you know number one foils uh my my number one refinement uh person that I would go up against for for years uh is is gone he's playing dice masters and he's he's yelling about dice masters having the same problem hero clicks does is with no unified wording and other stuff like that and them not making rulings on things when they need to make rulings so uh and and i ended up you know talking to him about it and it is just mainly like hey hey a, a lot of stuff is very unfun right now and i I sort of realized that definitely when I sat back and um, and I was talking to him about Origins and that he could be like the Origins <laughs> world champion of, of Dice Masters um, and uh, if, if he wanted to come with me to, to Origins. And that was... It, it was sort of painful because it was painful to an extent of I know this guy could be one of the top 16, top eight, even top four players in hero clicks. Um, I've, I played against him day in, day out. Um, and having gone against some of the better players in, in the world and, and watched the better players in the world. I, I know he, he has the, the rules capabilities, the skill, the, the ability to just create super destructive teams. But there is a point where, I wouldn't say the the burnout occurs, but the frustration with WizKids hits like an all time high, and and for for him, it did, and he just left Hero Clicks. I don't know if it's for good. He hasn't sold all his stuff, but he started talking to me about selling his stuff. So I don't know if he's going to still have his stuff, but uh, it made me also look at like the state of my venue. And made me realize like I was starting to cultivate some other people and I literally have to start over and I and and what I have to cultivate uh, skill and bring out uh, the, the best in them is is one adult and a bunch of young kids. And that can be really frustrating uh, mainly because kids don't have a lot of money, so they can't bust out the super meta awesome stuff to 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 really push you. And so I sort of found myself teaching fundamentals. Um, it's it's sort of like a rebuilding year, well, it's sorta of, not not is it's it's almost like year one after Armageddon and the Kraken was defeated. Um, and and so I, I've I'm starting to try to look at things a little differently. I'm starting to try to look at it at the teams and what I play uh, and, and and sort of reduce things down and sort of tell them like, OK, I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing this. Um, this is where this is going. This is why this is going. And so they can start to pick up those little nuanced things Um a lot earlier in their their hero clicks career now one of the young guys he's been playing for a couple of years and i i told him if he'd stop playing call of duty and you know just put a little bit of work in hero clicks he would be a really good player but he's not hearing that jazz call of duty is is the crack you know so but yeah it a lot of people might be wondering like well dang it you know what is this going to mean for your analysis and stuff like i'd still do the quarry and i still talk with people and as much as i want to leave one of my facebook chats i'm sort of having to just to to get random bits of information that's useful but it forces you to realize like there's a time to plant and there's a time to harvest and many of us, uh, when we're playing hardcore, are in harvest mode all the time, all the time. 
and it's like, got to go play this, going to go to world championships, got to do this, going to go to world cup, got to play this, got to get my stuff lined up. Now I'm going to be able to go to world championship, got to do this, going to go to Iraq, got to do that world cup, world championship, rock, world cup, rock, world championship cup. And it's this constant cycle in which we're sort of, uh, grinding down our venues. Uh, but if we're able to, to sew things back in, uh, make incentive for people to come, uh, understand that, you know, Hey, if, if we can't afford it to, to get that one LE off of eBay and let everybody else, you know, in the venue, go ahead and, and get it. When we start looking at things like that, then we we were able to just you know develop people and then just spending time. I mean, I tell the um, the kids that I, I I work with now, like, hey, you know, I do a podcast on YouTube. Check it out. Starting over podcast. I do a podcast on YouTube. And um, what strikes me is you know one of the the older players that was playing. Uh, just started listening and he started incorporating some things and I'm starting to see some growth in him. Same with his son. And, and hopefully one of the little kids, uh, younger kids that's playing will also be able to, you know, start getting some lessons in. So th- there's, there's that. So, you know, just keep in mind um, the, the high quality play in your venue is never guaranteed. You know, life changes you know, people have kids, you know, like I got a nephew now, like my, some of my thoughts and some of my processes have changed. Like, even though like, yay, better job. And, and that first partial check was, was really needed and on time. But, uh, I look at it, I'm like, okay, I need to save for this. I need to put money away for that. I still owe money on this, those sorts of things, um, still hit. So, um, Anyway, uh, just just sort of look at out at your venue. And, I, you know, I do say, like, you know, make friends. Uh, it is important, you know, not just for uh, your skill, but you have people you enjoy life with. Uh, but definitely if you want to keep your venue uh, together and, and keep a certain level or caliber of play, it does require you to uh, sew back in. So. All right, that's today's episode. Thank you for listening. We hit that 50-minute mark. Yay. Uh, You can follow me on Twitter, at StartOverPod. It came from outer space and told me, man, you need to stop eating pancakes and sausage at work and do a whole lot more jumping jacks to get that cardio going. Uh, So uh, you can find out when it shows up. You can find out random musings, what's going on. Um, I might actually have one this evening. Who knows? You know, it's random. That's the point. You can uh, email me at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. That's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. If you wish to opine, keep it piffy, keep it interesting, keep it awesome, baby. Uh, Tell me what you think of by the time this comes out, uh, the Avengers Assembled set. Uh, I will possibly have an Avengers Assembled review up soon. Um, It's just a matter of when that will hit, Uh, whether it's going to be. It's it's all going to depend on on how fast we find out all of the the chases, really, and we can get stuff confirmed. So that's that's the main thing. Now, I know that uh, a lot of other podcasts out there are doing a really good job of giving you like news and information and all all those previews and what does it mean for the meta and i know i used to do that but one thing i started to learn as well um and and you know i'm not saying and and throwing haterade on this but eventually if you look at a whole set and that one guy that was awesome all of a sudden is overshadowed by this other guy that's in the set and then you're like i would you you sort of backtrack and you're like oh man i thought the trick shot was going to be so good and then hawkeye came out and Hawkeye just, you know, made Trick Shot look like a little punk, you know. So you 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 have to sort of watch that. And that's why, like, I mean, I like the previews. And I'll listen to the other podcasts. Um, but I, I don't do the previews anymore. 
you know, when the set comes out, the set comes out, and then we talk about the set when it comes out, so, but yeah, uh, anyway, and uh, last but not least, uh, there is the blog, if you like to donate to the show, everything that you donate will go towards the show, uh, and uh, you can donate to the show at startingoverpodcast.blogspot.com, the buy list, the buy list, the buy list will be on the blog, so, uh, definitely uh, look for that. All right. Uh, hopefully here I can get some little side, mini side projects done. Um, doing some more topography. Um, definitely going into origins and uh, yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for listening. And remember, we all have to start over sometime.